What's going on guys? It's Brad here back with the final edition of this four-part series, 181 Things I'm Doing as Your Real Estate Agent. This is all under the Real Estate with Reynolds, Episode 8, Part 4. number 141, a bunch of different things I'm doing. First one is I'm gonna make sure the title company got our earnest money check. That's a big one starting off, uh, something you have to do within a few days of going under contract. Number 142, I'm gonna get with the lender and underwriter weekly to make sure we're hitting those benchmarks to keep us on track to close on time. It's usually a 40 day closing period. Uh, but within that, there are benchmarks that go on behind the scenes, most of which the client doesn't see, but I, as the agent, have to keep that in check. Number 143, I'm going to relay final approval of the loan once I have it to my client, and if I'm on, especially if I'm on the buyer side, and I'm also going to relay that to the listing agent to let their seller know we have the clear to close. Couple here, 144, 145, 146, dealing with the appraisal. The lender will set up the appraisal. I'll make sure the lender has ordered it once we go under contract. I will reach out to the appraiser or they'll reach out to me, whether I'm the listing agent or even if I'm the buyer's agent, and then we'll make sure that they get out there to do it and then we get our report back. And we've got a couple of choices here. Uh, main thing being we just have to make sure that the property is worth what we're under contract at, if not more. If it's less, we're in trouble, but we can always figure that out. Numbers 147 and 148, if the appraisal is low, I'm going to get with the appraiser to make sure their comps were good. If not, we can always uh, ask for another appraisal uh, and just make sure that they did it right. Um, I'll keep the other side in the loop of everything I'm doing, and I'll always make sure that my paperwork in regards to the appraisal is up to date with good comps, good value so that everything's okay. So we're now into well into the 160s, and another big thing is also, if they're moving, let's say they're moving elsewhere. I had a seller I worked with recently in Franklin, and they were relocating to New York City, to Manhattan. I reached out on their behalf to some local agents there, got them in touch with some good folks, got all that set up to where they could hit the ground running, and from the day we closed, it was actually a simultaneous closing where they were closing on a new place there in Manhattan. From the time we listed their house, went under contract, they went up to Manhattan, found a new place, put it under contract, and it was nice. We did what's called a, uh, we did both closings in one day, uh, where we closed that one and then closed the next one back to back. Real simple and uh, very easy to do. So now we're towards the end, closer to the closing preparation, what all that looks like. First thing I'll do is I'll get with the title company, I'll get with my buyer if I'm the buyer's agent, or if I'm on the seller's side, I'll get with our title company, set up a day and time to close and make sure that everything's good there. If I'm on the buyer's side, we'll get the final closing disclosure, the wiring instructions, and the CD, and the closing package sent over from the lender to title company. They'll get with the buyer, make sure everything's good. We'll look over all the numbers, make sure all that's right. We'll set up a day and time to close. We'll do a final walkthrough before making sure that any agreed to repairs were done, completed, which is always a good thing. Then we'll meet at the title company. This is the place we'll physically go and sign. And then from there, we'll snap some photos and uh, I'll give them my closing presents and uh, say thank you for their, their uh, letting me work with them and we'll be on our way. Now, if it's what's called a mail away, where the buyer or seller is signing from afar, I will make sure our title company gets in touch with our notary, gets them set up. I had one last week where the client was in Chicago. Um, our title company got with a local notary there in Chicago. They agreed upon a certain day and time to meet up and sign, and then all of that paperwork is sent to the title company, and then we can uh, go from there with getting the deal closed and funded and all these good things. So that's a big part of it too. Mail aways don't happen often, but when they do, uh, because of what I've done in the past, it's an easy thing to knock out. So then I'm going to go into the MLS and change it from under contract showing or not showing to closed when I'm on the listing side and I'm going to make sure the buyer's agent gets credit here in Middle Tennessee and elsewhere. You've got to do that to make sure that uh, each side gets uh, their credit for the client that they had 
If there was a home warranty, our big focus here is making sure that the paperwork is active and the policy is in place to where if anything happens, they can draw on the language of that home warranty agreement and get it fixed. This is a big one. Probably only about 25% of the deals I do have some kind of warranty. When you're on the seller side, it's really imperative that a seller offer that. It gives good peace of mind to any particular buyer and their agent looking to say that should anything happen in the next year after we close, a home warranty, depending on the terms, will cover a lot of it. Now into the well, into the 170s, and big things, post-closing things. Go and pick up your sign from the seller's uh, yard. I can't tell you how many agents will go and close a deal and forget to pick it up and just the sign gets tossed or something happens with it. Um, I always go and get that. Uh, you'll also, depending especially if you're the buyer, you'll want to have your locks changed out. Um, this is a big one here. You never know who were uh, the previous owners who may have given a copy of the keys to friends or family and you don't want that floating around with them now that the property is yours. So in the days leading up to the closing, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have all your utilities set to go on the day that you close. I've had a number of first time home buyers over the years who I email a couple weeks before saying, hey, make sure you get on that electricity, the water, the gas. We close, they call me that next day, I'm turning on the switch and there's no electricity. What's going on? And I say, well, did you not see my email about the utilities? They say, yes. I say, well, did you call to get those set up? And they say, no. Uh, so that's a big thing when you're buying. You got to make sure that they're on. And I usually tell clients to have the service transferred the day of or the day before closing. So there's overlap between uh, customers, between the previous owner and you as the new owner, because um, you do not want to be moved into a house when it's way too hot or way too cold with no heat or air conditioning. So we're getting really close to the end here termite company we live in the south it's hot it's humid no matter where you live if you got a single family house here in the south you want to have some kind of service that comes out a couple times a year and sprays uh, the house for bugs for pests uh, a security system in place whether it's a ring doorbell system or an ADT system um, most of Nashville Middle Tennessee is extremely safe but crime can happen anywhere you want to have some kind of system in place for when you're traveling or when you're not there uh, to protect your valuables. So always make sure you do that. I highly recommend ADT. I've used them for years and uh, really like them. So there's a lot of scammers out there. And post-closing, when you're on the buyer side, you're going to get a number of things in the mail, many of which are scams, uh, shysters, people mailing you things, asking you to mail money for a deed, things like that. Post-closing, no money needs to be exchanged, particularly with anything coming through the mail. I always tell clients, call me, reach out to me, I can help you. Many times the paperwork looks official with stamps and things like that that make it look like it came from your lender or a title company or from the state of Tennessee. Um, there's a lot of good scammers out there, unfortunately, so be very careful, be very vigilant. Don't send money to anyone without at least checking it over with your title company, your lender, or with your agent. So we did a number of those relatively quickly. I didn't go through each one one by one in terms of numbers combined a lot together. But with that, we wrapped up part four of Real Estate with Reynolds, episode eight, 181 things I'm doing as your agent. The question is, is yours. Been doing this a long time, have helped a lot of people, have grown a lot, still plenty to learn, plenty to experience, and so many more deals to come by. Would love to help you. If you need me, reach out anytime. My personal cell, 615-856-3270. Email me at brad at thinkbrad.com or check out our now live website, thinkbrad.com. Thank you so much for tuning into this. If you like these videos, please go to YouTube, search Brad Reynolds Real Estate, hit the subscribe button, leave us a like, leave us a comment. Tag some folks, tell us where we're doing well, tell us where we can improve, and until then, I will see you soon. Thank you so much.